Oh, man, man, good morning, all you beautiful people. Coffee is gorgeous today. In fact, I think I'm just going to go. Uh... Oh, that's my. Oh, that's my. I just have to. I just have to. So, today I just want to chat a little bit about something that's come across my mind in this morning. It started yesterday already. Something that I've actually been waiting for, not working for, but not working for, but waiting for definitely. And um, <clears throat> one of my, one of my recently more active followers on on one of my pages, actually was the one that that told me this, so to speak, reminded me of it. Uh, and that is, you know, is is. I, my, my YouTube page reached 100 followers, so that's, that's actually quite incredible for me because when I started this journey, it was on 10 or 20 or something. There was nothing really happening over there at that stage. And, um, you know, and they said, well done, bro, 100. And I'm like, mm, come on, boy, let's go. Growth. Celebrate growth, man. So I want to thank everybody today. I want to take a second and just thank you all that's been following, that's been watching, that's been sharing, that's been communicating with me, that's been, you know, the likes and the subs and all those things. You know, I celebrate everything and I want to use this moment to give you the opportunity or, or just tell you or remind you rather to celebrate the little things. I mean, people go, yeah, sure, seven months, 80 new followers from set, from 20 to 100. Any person that looks at percentages of growth will tell you that's massive. Uh, the, the, my TikTok and Facebook side has been larger earlier because I focused on them more. And realized, I realized recently that I would like to probably between Facebook and YouTube probably have the center of that sort of thing because that's where it seems to be the most thing. And it's, the, it's my personal preference. That's pretty much what it comes down to. And they've all been up there. Um, you know, so I've celebrated 250 on Facebook recently, almost 150 on TikTok. But the, the interesting thing about that is when this venture started, when I started with those daily messages in December, in September last year, they all had 10 or 20 or something like that. So, you know, that's for me, that's a phenomenal level of growth. And I want to remind you and bring this to your attention to remind you to celebrate the growth, celebrate the stuff that happens. I would celebrate, I celebrate actually one new follower every day. And I don't do it for the followers. I definitely don't do it to get followers. Let me rather say it that way. I do it for God because I feel God instructed me to do this, to share my messages out every day, the stuff that I learn, the stuff that I think about, because there is probably people out there that's going to that's gonna benefit from the message as well. Um, because I feel I have a very unique way of putting my message out there, plain, straightforward, not overly deep. And plain as simple as the word can be. And during this journey, I'm still finding myself as well. I'm still shaping. I'm still growing. I'm still seeing what God wants me to do and has me to do. So in this moment of celebrating all those, the, the three main ones, I mean, my personal page is is <clears throat> that, that I share all my videos and stuff on as well. My personal uh, Facebook page, for, uh, I think I'm thinking of where, where I always share my post to. Those follows are, are going up to uh, it's, 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 it's reaching, you know, like a thousand, almost a thousand marks sort of thing. So, you know, we celebrate the growth and I just love the fact that God's word is getting out there. That's what I'm celebrating today. And I want to thank each and every one of you that's been along with this journey. I'm looking forward to all the years that God's going to have me doing whatever. And and hopefully a lot of you will, if not all of you, I know we come and go as life goes, you know, um, things happen and whatever it is, you know, but I'm looking forward to the years to come that God has before us while we're waiting for him to come fetch us, while we're waiting for the end times, while we're waiting for all these things. We work towards the goals. We celebrate him. We we spread the gospel. That's what it's about. Is share Jesus with the people that you don't know. Because even in the hardest of times, I can sometimes still sit there and smile like this. We've had many videos about that. We are chat and share about you because there's joy in the Lord. There's fullness of joy in God's presence. And if you leave it at his feet. So I thought this morning what I would like to do is just share a couple of the verses that are my core verses that I carry with me from the start of this journey before actually the videos. So from the start and, and the ones that came on along the way. There's a few core ones that are, my, that are in my mind. I don't even need to say them anymore or think of them anymore. They're like engraved into my soul, you know. So I thought I'll, I'll share this. So first one is, is Deuteronomy. The, the core verse uh, for for left field, I'll, let me share that one with you first, actually. That's the core verse. That is the one that, I don't know, it came with me 
on the day that God showed me how big this might, well, not might, how big this is going to turn out to be, but I'm looking forward to that day. And that is Isaiah 55 verse 11, and I want to add verse 12 this morning, did I? Yes, I did. Um, so Isaiah 50, chapter 55 verse 11 says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. That is my absolute core verse about it, is that it doesn't matter if I make mistakes along the way, make the decisions that I all of a sudden feel, oh, I'm sorry, God, I don't think that was the decision I needed to make. Where we make mistakes, that, that God will, God's word will come to pass. It will, it will help me pick myself back up if I'm, I'm to be the one that's going to help that word come to pass. He'll pick me up, he'll go me. So it's a very good reminder for me personally not to... Not to be overly hard on myself. We are hard on ourselves. We are very hard on ourselves. But it, this verse also teaches me to give yourself a little bit of leniency because I'm still a human. I am still going to make some mistakes along the way. Um, verse 12 comes, which, which is the joyous side. It says, for you shall go out with joy. Look at that. <laughs> and look at this. And be led out with peace. Ah, how's this? Oh man, Isaiah could write. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Look at that. It's going to be a joyous occasion as you go with this word and as this word comes back to God. Oh man, it's going to be a journey and a half. So that's my core verse for left field. Some other verses. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 8 says, And the Lord, He is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Plain, simple. I use this verse often because it's such a good reminder that God is always with us and that He's gone before you. He's prepared the way for us. Uh, he, based on the decisions, I, th I think personally, I believe personally, he, may, he plans it out with the decisions that He hopes we will make. But when we don't make the decision, that particular decision, he orchestrates everything. He changes the whole plan to still reach the same. Because as the Bible says, a man can plan. So man can plan goes to your destination. But God directs the path. God directs the way. Um, Jeremiah 20 and verse 9 is the big part of this, that startup. It says, then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more his name. This is where people told Jeremiah to shush about God and about Jesus. And this is what, it, what, came, what, what started happening with me. Is, but his word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was wary of holding it back and I could not. That's where I am. That's what just happens. If I feel like I want to share God's word, you know, this is what happens. I can't. I can't not talk about God. If you're asking me how it's going and you don't want to hear about Jesus, then don't ask me how it's going because I'm always going to tell you how good God is to me because it's because of Him that it's going great with me. I give you the reason in it because it's about Him. It's not about me. If it's going good with me, that's because He is making it go good with me, go great with me, fantastic with me. If I'm prospering, it's I want to say it's His fault, but it's because of Him. It's not His fault. We can't blame God for anything, but that's a good blame, I feel. You know, if you smile at the end of this video, or you feel better about yourself in the video, blame me for that. You know, I'll take that blame. I think that's a good blame. Um, we're definitely going to go over the time a little bit this morning, but bear with me. I really want to, want to, want to get through all of these. Um, Matthew 16 and Luke 9 pretty much says the same thing. Um, that's an important one to remind us to die to yourself every day. And then Jesus said to his disciple from verse 24 in Matthew 16, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And I, uh, verse 26 hit me additionally this morning. It came in and said, For what does it profit a man to, if he gains the world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? That's an important question that adds on to that. What I like about Luke 9 as well, and the reason why I started adding that, you have to take them both because they say it's slightly different. Um, in Luke 9, where he, he adds, that if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Not for an hour a week, not one day a week, daily you take up your cross. You deny yourself, you take up your cross daily and you follow Jesus. That's, that's what I like about Luke 9. For whoever desires to save your life, his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what 
profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? So what does it benefit you if you gain everything in the world yet you lose your entire self, your being, who you are, what you are, your soul, you lose everything? What does it help you? Nothing. And then, um, because of a few conversations with a friend, this verse started standing out for me so nicely a few months ago. And this is Revelations chapter 2 and verse 17. It says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. The secrets, the hidden manna to eat. Oh, this is so moy. And I will give him a white stone. And on that stone, a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. So a name that God will give me, that only him and I know. And if you, if you oh man, I don't even have words to explain how, how this really works for me yet. But if you start serving God and you just chase God and you do everything just for him and to him and unto him, you begin getting these secrets that he reveals to you. I still have plenty that I can't put into words. But one way that one thing that I've said to some a few people so far is that uh, I feel that's the way that God gives me and him secrets. Is he gives me thoughts and things that I know and I know I know and it's the truth and I know it is him telling me. So it's absolute truth. It's godly truth. But I don't know how to get it into words to make it come out of my mouth. As there's, there's actually a lot of stuff. I know exactly what it is. But it's almost like a, a weird language or I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but I love it. It's, it's our secrets, me and him. And that's his way because I have a tendency to share everything. So he found a way to make me not always share everything because some things aren't meant to be shared uh, or maybe even at a later stage. I don't know. So those are, those are a few of my absolute core verses that I walk with every single day. They, oh man, they keep me on fire. That's such good reminders. As I said, I don't even need them as reminders anymore because once you remind yourself enough, it becomes muscle memory and you step into this place with God and you just get going and you just keep going and it, there's no end. You see, I need to breathe in between me talking sort of stuff, you know. And I want you to, I want to actually encourage you with this as well. If you don't be one of those people that, if you want to support somebody, support them. Great law. Don't, don't fiddle around. Don't go, he doesn't follow me, so I'm not going to follow him. He doesn't know me, so I'm not going to know him. Don't be that oak. Don't be that person. You follow somebody if you want to support them. End of story. Because Jesus never said, I'll, I'll, I'll do this for you if you follow me. I will die for you if you follow me. No, he's already died for you. He's already given you grace. It is free. He didn't give any thing for the people beforehand and said listen these are the requirements for me to heal you this is what you must know you had to only only believe no actions no extras no nothing not i will heal you if you heal me i will save you if you save me no jesus didn't do that he did it for you anyway he gave you everything the least we can do is give him everything and if you see somebody working really hard and whatever that person is doing is cool for you and you enjoy it and you like it support them give them a like and a subscribe on their pages the ones that you use maybe if i can tell you how i do it is if somebody new that i haven't seen before somebody that i know or don't know i don't i don't care which which one it is if i see one video and i and, and i like the video i'll give it a like i'll give it a comment often i might not follow immediately but if a second video of that same person hits my scrolls and it's another one that i that i actually thoroughly enjoy I'll hit you with a follow. Not because you ask me to. Because you could be doing stuff that doesn't interest me necessarily. And I know I might be doing something with stuff that's not interesting you. But if it's a growing space, you know, you've got to take it as it is. I won't follow you because you ask. Because that's out of compulsion. I don't like to give out of compulsion. I, got, I like to give because God tells me to. That's where I'm coming from. So if you ask me to follow, I'll go, no. But if I might find myself, let's say you've got a Facebook business page or something that you want looking to grow. And I'll scroll up my, my Facebook someday and maybe one of your, your business page posts come up and I go, oh, cool, liquor. Oh, this is somebody. Let me go follow them. Let me help them grow. Then I'll do it. But if you're starting out something, I'll do my absolute best to try and support you along the way as well. We've got to try and help and grow each other. I'm not wanting to step on you so I can get up there first. Jesus was first anyway. And as long as God stays first, I'm happy with that. I don't care if I don't grow among to be some big name in the world at all. I don't mind. I don't care. As long as people know Jesus, as long as I get to share God's truth and who Jesus is, spread his word, spread his life. Share with one another. Help each other grow. 
Be the best that you can be. But don't give to get, because we get to give. Thank you all again. I love you. Shalom.